Welcome, everybody, to the June 15th, 2016 meeting of the Traffic and Transportation Advisory Commission. Please rise and follow me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Ready, begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Mrs. Zambrano, will you call the roll, please? Commissioner Simpson? Here. Commissioner Gregory? Here. Vice Chair Reeder? Here. Vice, excuse me, Chair McMahon? Here. Thank you. Okay. Um, public comments. Any person who wishes to speak regarding an item on the agenda or on a subject within the city's jurisdiction during the public comments portion of the agenda must file a purple public speaker card with the recording secretary before that portion of the agenda is called. Any person wishing to speak on a specific agenda item must file a public speaker card before the specific item is called. Persons addressing this traffic commission are requested to state their name and city of residence for the record. Under state law, issues presented or introduced under public comments can have no action and will be referred to the traffic engineering division manager for administrative action or to be scheduled on a subsequent agenda. And it would be appreciated if you'd silence all cell phones during the meeting. Also, as TOTV can only record your comments while speaking into the microphone, there cannot be any dialogue between the audience and the commissioners unless you are at the podium. If you are unable to come to the podium or should you need to step away from the podium while speaking, a wireless microphone is available for your convenience. Each uh, public comment speaker will be given three minutes. The recording secretary will set the timer accordingly. When the yellow, light, yellow card is displayed, you will have one minute left, so please begin wrapping up at that time. The red card indicates your time is up, so please stop speaking, but remain at the podium until questions, if any, from the commissioners have been answered. Okay. So we do have two public speaker cards. And the first one is Michael Wolpert. Good evening, Commissioner, uh, Commissioners, I should say. Uh, I'm here tonight to talk about a hypothetical that could turn out to be a significant problem for us all, and that is the Unified School District for the Caneo Valley has to find a, lo a new location for up to three of its facilities. What that would mean if all three were involved is more than 2,000 car trips per day. Now, we live in Village Homes, directly across from the Cardin School. We're able to deal with the traffic that exists there today. Add 2,000 car trips a day, and it would not be possible at all. The roads in and out of Village Homes are one lane in each direction. A number of people park on the street rather than in their driveway or in their garage. And you can just imagine how much inconvenience to all with that number of car trips added to the area. Now, it's a hypothetical because we don't know what the school board is really going to do. And we don't know if it'll be one or two or all three of their facilities that will have to change location. So they're discussing that now. But I wanted to bring this up on the basis that maybe the Traffic Commission in the future can think about just what would happen to the immediate area of Village Homes. Now that's the good news. The bad news is that the only way that you can really get into Hampshire, into uh, the Cardin School, is from Hampshire Road on either Triumpho or Evenstar, or from Westlake Boulevard from Evenstar. The rush hour traffic in the morning, the afternoon, and at lunch hour is significant as it is now. Now add up to 2,000 more car trips a day. Now that would be a significant problem for everybody, not only the people within village homes, but certainly all the businesses and all the transitions, car transitions that would go on around village homes. So I'm here to say, think about it. There may be some action that might be possible in the future, but clearly I thought it would be best that you people understood just how much of a problem is potentially facing us on the horizon. 
and I appreciate your time. Thank you. Um, one moment to see if there's any questions. Do you have any questions? Could you repeat his name? Michael Walpert. Okay, I did have a question. Um, where did you come up with the um, number of cars that you're anticipating, and how does that compare with the number of cars currently? Okay, the cars, and I'm talking about only the school, not the residents, but only the school. Right now, the Cardin School has approximately 140, 150 students. And, that's, and their transition is early in the morning and typically ends about 3 in the afternoon. The three facilities that the school board is considering, one is Horizon Hills, of which there are 700 students enrolled. There is the Continuation School, which presently has about 100 people enrolled. And then there's the Starlight Academy, which I understand has between two and 300 people enrolled. So if you put all of them together, that would be about 1,000 people that would come each day. That's 1,000 road trips in, 1,000 road trips or car trips out. So that's how I came up with the number. I see. Thank you. You're welcome. Are there any other questions? Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Our next speaker is Jesus Torpoco. Please state your name and city of residence for the record. Yes. Jesus Torpoco. Good evening, commissioners. I come to you to raise certain traffic concerns by changes being proposed in my neighborhood, the village homes, home of the Carden Conejo Elementary School. The Conejo Valley School District is looking to move the Conejo Valley High School to the site of Horizon Hills and to move both Horizon Hills and its Century Academy High School to Carden Conejo, a private elementary school resulting in the closure of that school. Carden Conejo currently services about 125 families. Horizon Hill services over 600 and close to 700. Unlike Carden, Horizon Hills has programs that run in the evening and weekends. And that's before talking about the Century Academy, which has about 100 students and may bring teenage drivers to the streets of village homes. Through various freedom of information requests to the school board, it's become clear that the school district has proposed these changes without doing a comprehensive traffic study. All they seem to have done is the traffic counts, which is, I am submitting to you today. These traffic counts are superficial and tell us very little about the traffic impact of the proposed changes. The Carden Conejo site is deep within the village homes neighborhood and is well off of the main roads. It's on side streets where children play, seniors walk, and pets humble. There is no doubt that the traffic impact from the proposed changes will be pronounced. I have lived at the village homes for more than 30 years. My kids went to Cardinal School when it was a public elementary school. The Cardinal School was designed as a walk to a school, local elementary school, pursuant of the Conejo Master Plan. For the school board to do this without having fully analyzed the traffic impact of the community, it's outrageous. Thank you. Uh, do we have any questions of the speaker? I'd like to ask Jim a question, if that's uh, possible. Just a minute. Um, would you give it to our secretary, please? Okay, that's okay. Go ahead. Yeah. So, just um, to address this traffic concern of local village homes residents, Mr. Mashiko, I wondered uh, if the city would be participating with the school district should they decide to make that kind of change, or what is the protocol? because I know that's two different government entities. So how potentially could this play out as it relates to the traffic commission and addressing the situation? Um, well, we can check on that and, and get back to you, but uh, typically when it comes to a, a school like that, I don't believe they have to go through the normal channels to get uh, city approval for 
making such a change, but I, I would imagine in, in something like this we would share what was mentioned tonight with the school district so that uh, perhaps we can get involved to uh, see what we can do to help the situation. Thank you. Okay, that was our second and final public speaker comment, uh, public speaker. Um, let's see. Um, we all have summary notes. Are there any questions or comments? Okay. Um, we are at item six, the engineer's reports. Item 6A, the petition requests speed humps on Green Meadow Avenue. I'm suspecting that's why most of you are here. Um, Mr. Mashiko. Yes, uh, thank you, Chair McMahon. Uh, this is a petition request to install speed humps on Green Meadow Avenue uh, between Lynn Road and Newberry Road. We have a slide presentation on the far wall. Um, not sure if everyone can see it, um, but we have a uh, pictures and, and uh, summary information. Um, this first slide uh, is a neighborhood map showing Green Meadow Avenue, uh, shown in red, located south of the 101 freeway, uh, just north of Lynn Road. Uh, Green Meadow Avenue is a residential street that's just under half a mile in length with a 25 mile per hour posted speed limit. There's about 53 homes that take frontage along the road. Uh, at its north end, it terminates into Newberry Road where uh, Walnut Grove Neighborhood Park is located. And if this neighborhood looks familiar to the traffic commissioners, uh, you're uh, probably familiar with the speed hump petition that we reviewed for Newberry Road about a year and a half ago. Uh, this next few, few series of slides, I'm going to be showing a southbound view of Green Meadow Avenue as you start from uh, uh, Newberry Road as you make your way towards Lynn Road. So in this first slide, uh, taken at the intersection of Green Meadow and Newberry, you can see the road has a curb and gutter, sidewalks, and street lighting on the west side of the street. As you advance forward, uh, this is taken a couple hundred feet further south. Uh, the road begins to curve, and here you can see the posted speed limit sign, and there's a 25 mile per hour pavement uh, stencil in the ground. Uh, there's another view as you approach Capitan. Here there's a slight change in road grade. Uh, this next slide was taken at the intersection of Capitan. You see there's a slight change in road alignment in this photo. And in this last photo was taken at Cypress Street. Uh, the road is relatively straight and you have a clear view of the uh, signal ahead at the intersection of Lynn Road. Now just to give a bit of background on this petition, we received this uh, petition for speed humps early last month. Uh, we had a, a rather high petition rate, 43 of 53 properties signed the petition in support of speed humps. Um, so with that, staff completed a traffic, uh, traffic evaluation. Um, the uh, data findings and recommendation is in your uh, 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 report in front of you. So prior to this meeting, um, we mailed out about 500 notifications to the neighborhood inviting residents of Green Meadow Avenue and cross streets to come down and share their concerns uh, and input with the commission to help you um, come up with a recommendation on this matter. Uh, the city speed hump guidelines are uh, documented by resolution. It's resolution 2009-45. There's a number of criteria that must be satisfied for the uh, city to recommend the installation of sp speed humps along a street. Here's four of the key criteria that we look at. There's a petition rate, uh, traffic volume level over a 24-hour period for the street, speed criteria, and residential street requirement. Uh, for this investigation, uh, we reduced the traffic volume threshold by 500 vehicles down to 1,500 due to a number of road conditions that exist uh, per the resolution. There's hidden driveways, uh, pedestrian activity, sight distance issues, and there's a park along the street at the north end. Um, it's a Walnut Grove Park, and here's a photograph at the north end of the street at Green Meadow and Newberry. Here's another another photograph of Walnut Grove Park, and this one's looking eastbound on Newberry Road. Um, and one of the unique uh, features of Walnut Grove Park that we discovered is that it's one of the three neighborhood parks in the city that offers an off-leash um, area for dogs. So this probably generates some outside traffic from outside the neighborhood. And so um, some of the trips that get to this uh, park from Lynn Road you'll find that Green Meadow uh, Avenue f offers a direct link to this park. 
So in terms of our findings, uh, we found that Green Meadow Avenue meets all the criteria to qualify for the installation of uh, speed humps. It met the petition rate, volume level, speed, and residential street requirements. Uh, other findings that are not part of the speed hump um, investigation th that we typically look at, uh, we are uh, just pointing out here, uh, we took measurements of speed and based on the road segment that you're on, uh, you'll find speeds uh, ranging anywhere from 30 to 34 miles an hour. Uh, there have been two reported collisions over a five-year period from 2011 to 2015. Uh, neither collision were speed-related. And um, uh, recently, the city adopted a practice to install speed cushions rather than speed humps uh, due to citizen and emergency vehicle operator concerns over response times. And here's a photo of what a speed cushion looks like. This is taken from uh, Calle Olivo, which was installed uh, about a year, uh, year and a half ago or two years ago. Uh, with this design, uh, with the speed cushion, it offers cutouts that allow a fire truck to pass through this device uh, unimpeded so there's no impact to their response times. Uh, with three inch high speed cushions, uh, we expect most vehicles' speeds to be reduced down to about 25 miles an hour. Um, if speed cushions were ultimately approved for this street, uh, this schematic diagram shows a uh, spacing of seven speed cushions about three to 400 feet apart. Uh, and with this spacing, we're f we uh, we would tend to get uh, uniform and steady speeds uh, along the entire segment rather than having cars speed up and slow down if they were spaced further apart. Um, one of the considerations with speed humps and speed cushions as they can divert traffic to other parallel routes. So this uh, map here, uh, the streets shown in green are the other candidate streets where traffic could divert to. Uh, the the um, Roads that are shown in yellow is what we call a shortcut route. It's a shortcut from Lynn Road to um, uh, West uh, Newberry Road. Uh, we took measurements of uh, uh, the shortcut or the, uh, traffic out there, and we found that there's about a 10% usage uh, along Green Meadow Avenue during the peak hours using that yellow route as a shortcut route. And um, ideally, if speed humps or speed cushions were to divert traffic off of this road, uh, the ideal road that would be used to get to those businesses on uh, West Newberry Road would be Hague Road. Um, so with that, the staff recommendation is noted in the staff report. Uh, if the commission concurs with the recommendation, the petition will move forward to City Council for consideration. And that concludes this uh, report. I'll be glad to answer any questions. Thank you. Are there any questions? Commissioner? There are no commit. Oh, okay. Let's start at the end then. Uh, okay. Since I was here for the last time this was reviewed, so this is a whole new petition that the neighborhood signed to start this process. Yes, that's that's correct. Because right. I know our recommendation at the time was to put a uh, stop sign in Hague, and that there was a line of sight potential issue at. Uh, tra um, trail side court uh which did not get uh, council approval though so that didn't go in so uh I also remember that most of the speeding is westbound from my notes because i have all of them from last time so all right then we'll start over and see see what everybody else is going to contribute thank you yes mr mishigo where was the traffic count taken where did you have your Measurement. Uh, we have we were we placed them along three uh, points along the street, between uh, the the cross streets that cross um, uh, Green Meadow Avenue. One was uh, between Lynn and Cypress. Another one midpoint between Cypress to Capitan, and a third measurement between um, Capitan to Newberry Road. Were they all about the same, or did the traffic uh, diminish as, as people proceeded down the road? Um, the, tr the traffic volume levels, um, yeah, as you start from Lynn Road, they did decrease. The highest measurement was the segment that was closest to, um, to Lynn Road. And that data is uh, summarized 
on page seven in the staff report. Uh, 2,900 in that first segment, 1,830 in the second segment, and uh, 1,060 in the third segment. Thank you. So it, you also said there was a 10% uh, of the traffic was shortcutting? Uh, that's correct. We uh, uh, performed what we call a license plate survey. We, so we um, had staff strategically positioned at various points and measured traffic coming in and out of the neighborhood at uh, Lynn Road at uh, Green Meadow, uh, another person at the stop sign at uh, Newbury at uh, Hague Road, and a third person at the corner of uh, Newbury and Green Meadow Avenue. So we measured plates and we followed them through and we came up with a 10% shortcut right during the morning and evening peak periods. So then I can assume that most of the speeders are residents of this general area. Um, it's it's probably a combination of, of, of everyone. I mean, typically in a residential neighborhood, most of the drivers in that along the street are going to be the residents. So um, you would definitely have to say it's the residents, but there's always... Uh, uh, the outside traffic, and in this situation, there's that shortcut traffic headed to uh, West Newberry Road, so uh, they're, they're probably speeders as well. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Did you have another one? Did you have one, Angie? Okay, did you have another one? Yeah. Okay. yeah, there was one other thing that came out of me reviewing my notes and then also noting here in the collision history of uh, the accident uh, and I remember some of the residents saying this was a problem that when they drive at a safe speed, speeders along there actually pass them illegally and have, you know, there but some, and now I notice right here that it actually has caused some accidents by doing that. So I guess we have some fast driving local neighbors too. So we don't deny there's a problem over there. Thank you. Is there anyone else? Any other questions? Okay, at that po at this point, we have some speakers. Um, the main speaker gets um, does the main speaker get a little bit more time? Yes, the main speaker gets ten minutes, and then after the others have spoken, the main speaker also gets five minutes uh, to conclude. And the other speakers get five minutes each. Correct. Correct. Okay, we got that settled. Um, our main speaker, our lead speaker, is Shane Tuttle. Please come up, state your name and city of residence for the record. No worries. Shane Tuttle and I reside in Newbury Park. Um, I am a resident on Green Meadow Avenue. Just to draw attention to or maybe correct something that's been stated earlier about this having gone through the process before on this street, I think he's uh, the commissioner is mistaken that with the review we did on Newbury Road, not Green Meadow. Uh, Newbury is a problem as well, a contributing problem, but we, a year and a half ago it was for Newbury Road, not Green Meadow. <coughs> um, so to preface this, obviously the reason the petitions come forward is my neighbors and I who live on Green Meadow um, have, have, are exasperated over the, the speeding issue that, we, that we've had. Um, I've only lived in the neighborhood for eight years. There are residents that have lived there since the homes were built, um, and there are residents that have just moved in in the last year. I'd note that in my eight years there, um, the number of children that now reside in Green Meadows probably tripled in the last couple of years. There's a lot more outdoor activity. With the advent of the Cola Park, the dog park that is, is now at, uh, at uh, Walnut Grove, there's a lot more foot traffic. People taking their dogs down there. And uh, as uh, Mr. Mashiko indicated, there is also a lot of traffic that simply enters at Lynn, drives down in the evenings and in the mornings to walk their dog at the park, and then exits our neighborhood through Green Meadow, all of which is fantastic. And I think my neighbors and I, most of us would agree that the dog park's been a welcome addition. <clears throat> um, it's just simply that the, 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 the people coming through the neighborhood are just in a hurry and are going way too fast for those of us with children and dogs and so forth. So that's that's what has precipitated this whole thing but this has been an ongoing issue long before i came to the neighborhood it's just gotten very bad um and a lot of the neighbors we consistently talk about it um and we just decided to put together the petition and put it through um depending on and i'm sure you'll hear from many of them tonight it's anywhere from th this started for me last october when i first reached out to jim mashiko and i've had a great deal of dialogue um 
with uh, Sergeant Clifton and, and, and law enforcement regarding enforcement of the speed. Um, but this precipitated for me when a ball rolled out of my driveway and I'd explain to my daughter who's here tonight to try and teach her to look left, look right, and then look left again and cross the street. And we did that and I held her hand and we walked out and we were both almost struck by a car coming around Newbury Road onto Green Metal, hitting the full throttle. And at that point in time, it scared me enough to start talking with neighbors to see how to go about doing this. And that's why we're here tonight. Other, other neighbors will tell you, depending on where their house is, it's an issue when they back out of their driveway. Um, depending on if you live on a corner or if you live up near the Lynn Road exit, simply exiting your driveway. I'll be frank, I was soliciting p uh, petition signatures and backing out of some of these neighbors' driveways was almost struck repeatedly. So it's an ongoing issue in the neighborhood. Um, it's a concern for me as a parent because I like my kids to be able to play in our front yard. We don't have much of a backyard. Um, and I'm scared if a ball rolls out of the way. I've had people leave the street, enter the boulevard and take out a street sign in front of my house. Um, because they were trying to take a corner too fast. To have my daughters ride their bicycles or roller skates down that same skywalk, sidewalk is, is, is a scary proposition for me. There's uh, senior citizens, there's people walking their dog at night, there's a great deal of traffic. Um, so that's, that's a concern for us. There's to the point that was raised a moment ago, if you do do the speed limit, which most of us on Green Meadow do, um, a, the, a year and a half ago the result of the the 25 mile an hour stencils that went on the road are a great reminder for me when I'm coming home from work and I pull off a lane and onto Green Meadow and I see that 25, it's an instant reminder for me, having done an hour commute on the 101. That, that has worked great at both ends of the street as a reminder from an education standpoint. Um, but from Lynn Road to Newbury Road, the traffic obviously depletes as people turn off but then it picks up speed as you come down Green Meadow on the straightaway that was indicated on, the, on the, the, that long area between Newbury Road and Cypress. What has also happened repeatedly on Green Meadow, and it's happened to me, is if I do slow down and take the stencil reminder and I'm doing 25, I will have people pass me on a two-lane residential road and go around me um, because I'm doing the speed limit. Um, I, for one, live on the very end, so I, although I would never advocate being a fan of speed humps or bumps or cushions or whatever you want to call them, I will hit every one of these every day going back and forth and have no problem doing so if I can actually let my kids play in my front yard. So I will drive longer than maybe everybody in here except two or three individuals that live next to me or across the street from me. Um, so I have no issues with those. The, the factors that we talked about, um, it, the shortcutting is, is one aspect of it. Right now, we also, like I said, have an issue with the dog park, which is, again, if the traffic is fine, if it's, if it's, if it's safe traffic. Um, but we have people that come in in the mornings. I live on the corner across from the park. Um, the park, they did the, uh, the christening of the park on May 2nd. It was in the Acorn. Uh, they did a six-month period before that where they tried the park to see that, you know, that everything worked okay. It's now a fenced-in permanent type dog park. Um, it works great. But I can tell you now that in the mornings and in the evenings when I'm in front of my house, there is a large group of traffic at that T of Newbury and Green Meadow simply because of people coming to walk their dogs before or after they come home from work, which is fine. But it creates a traffic nightmare coming through there now um, with respect to the speed of the traffic because they're flying in after work to, to let their dog go to the bathroom and they're flying back out of there to go pick the kids up or go make dinner or whatever. And these are people that live outside of the neighborhood. To the point that was raised about people in the neighborhood speeding, yes. I, I think given the, the number of people you had sign um, for Green Meadow Avenue, um, we know who each other is. We know who is and who isn't. And I'm pretty certain that most of the people on Green Meadow aren't speeding because we have to live on that street. But I can assure you every street that tees off of there, I have, I have people I know down the street that are consistent speeders. Um, so so that, that's an issue. In addition to the dog park, we've got Regan, uh, Regan Motors, which is right up the street on Newbury Road and we are their car test drive route. So anyone test driving a car at Regan Motors will come down Newbury Road, take it up Green Meadow or Wind Tree Avenue, and then cruise down Green Meadow and hit Lynn Road and then hit the 101 so they can do their 55 mile an hour check and then back to Ventu and around again. And I've gone down and personally, personally visited with the owner and took a picture of his business license and told him I would make every effort to make sure that he doesn't have it if this continues. And that occurred over a year ago. Um, he's since removed the little Regan flags from the cars when they do their test drive, but they, <laughs> but they now have the, they still have the Regan Motors plates on them. And most of the cars are your, your something that I would buy for my 18 year old. It's a, a low budget car, but 
the, you put an 18 year old in a car and he's gonna test drive that car and their problem is they're doing it through our neighborhood. In addition to that, you've got the equestrian rehabilitation center there, which again is fantastic, but there are certain individuals, I can think of a black Rand, a Land Rover in, in, that comes out of there every night and that will pass a car on Green Meadow Road every night because she's in a hurry to get out of there. And that's a consistent issue. The new thing that really concerns me is the 55 unit townhomes that are being built on Newbury Road between Ventu and Green Meadow that even now the construction traffic that comes through our neighborhood in the morning and exits our neighborhood in the evening for those contractors that work, <coughs> pardon me, that work uh, south of us will use Green Meadow to get back to Lynn and get on the freeway from there to avoid, as everybody knows, it travels down the 101. Once you pass Lynn Road, it goes down a lane to Ventu, and you kind of get that gridlock from there all the way over the Camarillo. Um, so what they'll do is the contractors will leave now and come down Green Meadow to exit to get onto the 101 that are heading south um, because it's just quicker. You don't get caught in that gridlock at Ventu. And if the contractors are doing that, when those 55 units are complete, each with two car garages, um, we're going to, I anticipate more traffic. Again, fine. If the traffic's traveling the speed limit through there, that, that's not an issue for most of us. All we want is, is to allow our kids to play in the front yard, to walk a dog down the street. Um, so we've gone down and I've had many discussions over the last, I mean, I started in October just having dialogue with law enforcement and, you know, education was the first thing as a result of your year and a half ago review of Newbury Road, we ended up being the recipients of the stencils on the ground as part of that. Green Meadow got the stencils also. I think that's great. Um, so educated. It educates me every time I make a turn. Um, we've got the speed limit signs. Every opportunity that we can get, individuals have requested and the city's provided the digital trailer with the radar sign to remind people. We see those every couple of weeks, um, or excuse me, every couple of months. So we've utilized that to no effect. Um, it's good for the moment, but most of the residents back there know it's just a flashing light. Um, lastly, uh, enforcement, you know, we've worked with, with Officer Clifton and, and, and I've had many discussions with Mr. Fryhoff and they've come out and the, the enforcement, while it's there, works. But when they're gone, everything goes right back to the way it was. So to me and in my discussions with law enforcement um, and with my neighbors, we feel that engineering has to step in here because of all these changes that are occurring outside of the context of what your cookie cutter rules are for justifying this. We've met those requirements. I think right now all we want to do is we want to be able to enjoy our neighborhood like everybody else around us has the luxury of doing. Thank you. Hang on, just a moment, just oh, a moment. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Are there any questions of our speaker? Okay. Now you can go. Thanks. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much. Thanks, um, The next speaker is Catherine Smith. Um, and at the podium, please state your name and city of residence. I'm Catherine Smith. Um, I live in Thousand Oaks. I live in this neighborhood, and I just would like to ask the Traffic Commission to consider another remedy other than speed cushions. It seems to me that uh, looking at the traffic report, that the speed cushions would probably divert traffic, and that's really not a solution to the problem. It's just going to move the problem over to some other streets. It might also create some additional problems. Um, we do have bicyclists on the road. And with the cutouts, I'm wondering if they're going to be driving, riding in the middle of the street when they try to avoid the cushion. Um, I'm also uh, wondering about the effect on drivers. Because of the cutout, you can't drive straight over these. You're going to kind of be tilted a little bit when you go over them. I don't know if that's a big deal. I don't know what impact that's going to have on people's uh, suspensions. And if the cushions, uh, I talked to uh, Mr. Mashiko about it, and he said the cushions don't really have much of an impact. Well, if they don't, why are we spending $25,000 to put them in? Um, meeting the criteria for the speed bumps, I looked at the report, and the criteria obviously is met, but it doesn't seem like it's very strongly met. It's, I, I, don't see, uh, I don't see hidden driveways on the street. I do drive and ride on the street a lot. Um, I also would say that the park is not along Green Meadow, but it is on Newberry Road. 
I, I haven't noticed a whole lot of traffic either. It doesn't seem like the speeds to me are, are really very high. I mean, we don't want people to speed at all, clearly. But if there haven't been any real problems, shouldn't we consider another remedy before we go and put in speed bumps? Uh, speed bumps are forever. <laughs> they also would change the look of the neighborhood, which you know, we don't want that industrial speed bump thing going on there. And really what I don't want is the traffic to be just moved and become someone else's problem. So if one of the other remedies would work better that are outlined in the report, I would like to ask you to consider them. Are there any uh, questions of the speaker? Do you live, maybe you said this off the top, but what do you live on Green Meadow or are you li living in one of the side streets? I live on Brookside okay. and I, I turn on that corner off of Cypress when I go to work every day. And this morning I was looking at it too, saying, well, well, how much traffic volume is there? Because most of the traffic, according to the report, is coming off of Cypress and then going to Lynn or going the other way around. I see three cars opposing me. I see one car coming down Green Meadow in the morning. So I'm kind of, I don't know, it, it just seems strange to me, but then I haven't done a study. Thank you. Any other questions of our speaker? Okay, thank you. Our next speaker is Michael Cook. Koch. Koch, excuse me. That's okay. Well, first of all, I would like to thank the Thousand Oaks Traffic and Transportation Advisory and Commission um, and the guest here for allowing me to speak briefly. Um, my name is Michael Koch. Um, I am a retired law enforcement officer, and I've lived on Green Meadow Avenue for 16 years now. Just as far as my aspect goes, I have seen the increase in traffic there. Um, I am retired, so I am out a lot. Um, being actually on the street, I do see the volume of traffic that we do have. Um, we have more businesses now from when I first moved in. We have the auto lot now that sells cars. We have the medical businesses where you have the doctors, the patients every day going to the medical facilities. Uh, we have the, um, the bedding sofa place. I don't know if they get that much traffic, but we have that there. We do have an increase of business along that area now. Um, and that is what I think, and along with the dog part, that's what I think is the increase in traffic. Um, we have seen some enforcement, and I do, you know, we have the posting of the signs that reminds people to slow down, and it does work. But it does, as soon as that sign is pulled after a week or so, it stops. You see the speed again. I applaud the Ventura County Sheriff's Department. When they enforce that street, again, they are writing the ducats or tickets out there, it has worked, but as soon as they leave, and they cannot be there all the time, I know that, the traffic continues. I myself have seen, and my wife, we have had, going the speed limit, we have had people pass us on the street. And I tell you, like I say, being retired, I want to go up there and, you know, issue myself, but I won't. That's just dangerous. And what I would like to say, everything works temporarily. I'm hoping this speed hump situation might be a permanent solution solution today we live in a hurry up society we want to get there we go back we're not a relaxed society that has just changed naturally as as we are we weren't the same way we were 20 30 years ago um, we have a chance to be proactive here instead of reaction instead of reactive a lot of times we see a problem something happens a kid gets hurt kid gets killed maybe and we become reactionary then we do something about it I say to here, let's be proactive. Let's stop this. I would hate to see any of these two young ladies or any of the children or adults or senior citizens get hurt. And not only them, the family that has to grieve that incident, and what about the person that speeds? They have to live with that too if they're breaking the law. So that's something else we have to think about. This can be at least preventative or what I like to call risk mitigation. By doing something like this, we have an opportunity Hopefully it'll work, but we do have an opportunity to be proactive and maybe mitigate the risk of an injured child or therefore anybody else on the street. Um, we also looked at the average here, you know, 30, 35, and I was looking at it, I was kind of stunned. And I go, wow, that's not really that much of an increase over the speed limit. But remember, that's an average. For every one of us that do 25 miles an hour, it's 40, 45, 50 miles per hour that they're speeding on that street to create that 30 to 35 mile per hour average. 
So yeah, by itself, it looks okay. They're only doing four or five miles an hour over the average. But let's take account for the people that are doing the 10, 15, 20 miles an hour over the speed limit to create that average. Other than that, I'd like to thank everybody for allowing me to speak and thank you, Commission. Do we have any questions of the speaker? Thank you. Our next speaker is Elliot Rada. Rada. Please state your name and city of residence. Yes, my name is Elliot Rada. I live on Green Meadow Avenue. I've been a resident on that street for 40 years. I'm retired law enforcement. I have plenty of time, so I'm out in front of my house all the time. And people that want the bumps on the street are the people that live there to have children and don't want to get hurt. You're going to have a lot of people don't want it and have excuses because they don't want it on their streets. That's the way it is. And I understand. If I was them, I'd do the same thing. But I see almost accidents happen all the time where you don't have the reports, where people slide and you see the skid marks where they almost hit a child. You don't have reports like that. You have minor damage accidents. They're not reported because it doesn't have the amount of damage needed for a report. So you could have 35 accidents that don't have enough damage that won't be reported by, to the sheriffs. So that report is not really that accurate when it comes to almost kills. I used to work in law enforcement, and I handled traffic accident investigations as a detective. I went to autopsies of dead children, and I see it sooner or later. It's going to happen on Green Meadow. A lot of dead kids are going to happen because you get more and more traffic with all the businesses that are on Newbury Road now, and they all go down Green Meadow to get to work and go home. So it's just a matter of time. And I've seen that, you know, in Los Angeles, and it's going to happen more here. There was less traffic when I moved in, but there's a lot now. And we used to have a good patrol on our street, but that young deputy married the girl on the street and moved away. So we don't have him anymore because he did real good on traffic enforcement every day. You know? So, uh, you know, that was good then, but not now. So it's just a matter of time because I don't have children. I'm old. And so I can see it just potential is going to happen because we have so many more children now than when I used to go to these meetings 30 years ago and just get... It's a, you know, it's a law enforcement problem, not engineering. It, it, that's what I heard about the 20 meetings I used to go to. I haven't been to a meeting in 15 years. Uh, Mr. Tuttle did a great job getting things going here. He has children. He sees the problem. And I've seen cars go up on my street, on my um, sidewalk in front of my house, where they lost control because it was raining or whatever, and they were speeding. So I appreciate if you do something to save the children on our street. And I'm sorry about the people that don't want cars on their street because of these bumps. But, you know, we had, what, 40 years of this. It's time for a change. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have any questions of the speaker? Okay. Moving on to Bruce Herb Kirschman. And I'm sorry for anybody that I butcher their name. I really pro apologize. Well, that was well done, actually. Uh, it's Bruce Herb Kirschman. And uh, you nailed it, so thank you. Um, Thousand Oaks, I live on Green Meadow. Um, I have children, and you know one of the rules is you can't play in the front yard, uh, period. Um, so I hope, uh, really hope this goes through, and, and great job, Mr. Tall, getting, getting it to this point. Um, a couple observations, I'm up close to Lynn Road on Green Meadow. With Lynn Road and that traffic light, people uh, going to Lynn Road, when it, they try to hit the green and they'll accelerate. And uh, there was no speed taken of that uh, activity. It, it's totally out of control. I mean, they'll just full, full blown, you know, pedal the metal to hit the light. Uh, so that's an issue going that way. The, the other way, coming off of Lynn Road, you know, you got a 50 mile an hour posted speed limit. People are going 60, 55, 60, and they're taking the right turn into Green Meadow <clears throat> as a freeway off ramp. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, 30, 40 miles an hour, you know, rubber burning around the corner, it's dangerous. My, my wife, we've lived there five years, my wife's been rear ended pulling into our driveway and went through like six months of therapy on her neck. We've, we've been there five years, and there's been a number of near misses. So, 
the speed dumps are definitely going to help that. Um, I really think there's an issue with that speed limit on 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 uh, Lynn Road. That, that's a that's another huge issue. And uh, there's been a number of accidents. You know, I don't have a count, but you know, a couple times a year you'll hear you know metal hitting on Green Meadow and, and Lynn Road. Uh, the speed's just unsafe. So thank you. Do we have any questions of this gentleman? Okay, thank All you right. very much. Much appreciated. Uh, next speaker is Michael Hives. Good evening, Commissioners. I'd like to start by thanking you for your time as you um, spend. Please, as please state your name and city Michael resident. Hines, H-I-N-E-S, 365 Castilian Avenue. I'm here as a um, member of the neighborhood. I'd like to thank the commissioners for the time that they spend, uh, volunteer time that they spend uh, working with the commission and service to the city. I'd like to indicate that uh, the survey that was, or the petition that was originally signed uh, only took in those folks on Green Meadow, not the other neighbors uh, in the other three streets that would be involved. Um, it's been my experience in law enforcement uh, that uh, speed bumps don't work. Um, it is a psychological feeling for those folks in the neighborhood, but ultimately it's not going to solve the problem. I think some uh, review of uh, improvements along Hague Road, possibly undergrounding of the uh, storm drain systems and widening the street might solve some of that problem um, because it would be a faster way for people to go uh, down to Newberry Road and through the paths that they want to take. Um, as proposed, I think the uh, speed humps or speed uh, cushions would move the risk to um, other locations um, within the, the neighborhood. Uh, right now it's focused on uh, Green Meadow. To move it other places I don't think is just going to make the problem worse. Thank you. And if there's any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Thank you. Do we have any? All right. Thank you very much. Uh, our next speaker is William Irvin. Uh, please state your name and city of residence. William Irvin, Newberry Park. I live at 840 Capitan Street. I was a participant in these meetings a year and a half ago when we successfully got rid of the speed humps in favor of stop signs, which at least solved the problem in that part of Newberry Road. I don't for a moment minimize the concerns of my fellow neighbors on Green Meadow. I've seen it. I understand it. I think, however, the solution that's being proposed, uh, I don't think Hay Street at the moment is the desirable choice to bypass Green Meadow. I think it'll be Capitan, Linwood, and Castilian because they're already doing it. I happen to live at the junction of Linda Wood and Capitan, and we've got people hurtling around that curve. I've almost been run over a couple of times backing out of my driveway. So again, I understand the concerns on Green Meadow. But I also understand you need to come up with a solution and if I could draw your attention to page five, page five of the staff report, the most effective solution is to have a law enforcement officer sitting on his bike or his car watching you with a radar gun. That's expensive. You also have your little trailer that tells you how fast you're going, but everybody knows the trailer isn't armed nor is it going to follow you. Um, I used to have a home in Arizona. They had autonomous radar ticketing devices that they would park on various high-profile streets. It was a police car. It had a radar, it had a camera, you drove through, you got your license plate, your mug shot, and you got a ticket in the mail. So I'm thinking maybe we could do a hybrid, one or two cars that could be rotated between Green Meadow, Castilian, uh, uh, Capitan Street, that would save you the expense, and I think the Ventura County Sheriff's could find a use for that in other neighborhoods. Uh, the other thing is, going to page six, your neighborhood awareness programs, I think one of the speakers touched on it. Instead of talking to the homeowners, I think it's about time that the city proactively went to the businesses, Reagan Motors in particular, and said, look, you need to stop using this neighborhood as a test track. You need to encourage your patients and your customers to use Hay Road or come in from the other direction because, however you want to put it diplomatically, the natives are restless. But I am absolutely convinced all we're going to end up doing is transferring an extra 1,000 or 1,500 cars from Green Meadow, which solves their problem, over to my street four blocks over, and to Lindawood and Castilian. And uh, we're already experiencing this problem because we're already a dive-off area. Um, I think there, there's just got to be a solution that will work for everybody. And the thing I like about the autonomous uh, ticketing idea is the, the city makes money. 
the minute they see that camera car sitting on the sidewalk, they will slow down because they know they're going to get a ticket. And if you keep moving it around, you don't have to have expensive law enforcement. You don't have to have a motor cop or a, tra you know, a squad car sitting there. I think it would work. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Are there any questions? I understand your concerns. And on Linda Wood, how would you feel receptive at all to speed humps on your short segment of the street just to divert that impulse to take the shortcut to avoid I don't, the bumps? I don't live on Linda Wood, but I use it a lot to get to my house. Uh, if you'll excuse the selfishness, although I know this concern applies to about 25% of my neighbors, I drive a German car. They don't play well with speed humps and bumps. So while everybody else is slowing down to 25 miles an hour, I'm slowing down to three to five, which gets annoying if you come in and out of the neighborhood four times and everybody else gets to go 25. I would also offer, just as an uh, editorial comment as a car enthusiast, speed pumps, whatever you want to call them, are not going to slow down as pickup truck or an SUV. Not happening. And I've watched a lot of uh, people with baby on board signs rocket over speed bumps in different parts of Thousand Oaks because they're in a hurry. And they know the Land Rover, Suburban, whatever they're driving, speed bumps, no big deal. Are there any other questions? Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Um, next is Stan Ogle. Please state your name and city of residence for the record. I'm kind of short. I'll go here. <clears throat> Stan Ogle. I live on Green Meadow Avenue uh, in Thousand Oaks. Um, first of all, I'd like to say I did have sort of something in mind to say, but Shane has covered most of it, uh, as well as some of the other Green Meadow residents. Uh, so I, I won't just replay that same stuff. Um, I've lived on this street for 23 years. My kids grew up here. Um, Excuse me. Uh, something has to be done about this, okay? And I will tell you why I think speed humps are the right way to go. Because the people that are going through these neighborhoods are, some of them are shortcutting. They're getting from the freeway to their place, you know, as fast as possible. But many of them are local people, moms with cups of coffee in this hand, a cell phone in this hand, and three kids in the back. And they're hauling buns up our street. And you, they need a real-time, instant message that they have to slow down because they're just not thinking. There's too much going on. And this is the case with contractors, emergency vehicles, by the way, emergency vehicles, tow trucks. Uh, I've called Regan Motors myself as well. Same complaint. Hey, people are racing up the street. Uh, you guys have to do something about this. I have been in front of this traffic commission before trying to get speed humps on this street. Other people in this, in this audience have also been here before trying to get speed humps on this street. Something has to be done here, something serious, not passive. Don't just pass it off. And by the way, another solution like what you did on Newbury Road a year and a half ago, because I was here then too, because I wanted to see them get speed humps, even though that's not my street, but I knew it would help deter some of the speeders from going through our area. And what you guys did was, during that meeting, you indicated that you supported the residents that were here. People left that meeting pretty much feeling like, wow, we're gonna get these speed humps. And then the traffic engineers proposed the stop sign instead. And let me tell you, I, t I spoke to those people after, several of those people, and they were very surprised. I thought we had them. So whatever you do here, you need to take into consideration. We have been, we've had this problem for a long time, a long time. Okay, my kids have grown up on this street. <clears throat> I'm sorry. It's excessively frustrating. To know that your kids can't play in the front yard you see people on the street and uh, by the way when I, I get a new person on our street the first thing I tell them is don't let your kids play on the street it's not safe you have to do something about this 
and I'm sick and tired of coming here and asking for it and not getting some kind of result. You guys have to make some kind of decision that's going to accommodate this problem. Because like one of the persons here, I'm sorry, I can't remember who, somebody's going to lose their child. We've lost pets. There's, you know, it's, it's, it's going to go from bad to worse if we don't do something proactively. Thank you very much. Are there any questions? I have a question. Can you um, recall which year it was that you brought this speed hump suggestion to the commission so that we can? I believe in 97, um, myself and I can't remember her first name, Bell, came here. Thank you very much. And, um, and then before I was even on the street, I know, um, where is she? I, I saw her here earlier. Somebody else. Ah, there you are. <laughs> they petitioned as well. So, you know, please, let's, let's do something. Thank you Any very much. Questions? Thanks. I appreciate your um, concerns. Terry Mika, Micah? Micah. Terry Micah, please state your name into the record and their city of residence. Hello, my name is Terry Micah, and I live on Green Meadow. I was the first resident to move into Green Meadow after Fountainwood homes were, uh, were completed. We probably had about five years of peace before our adjacent streets, our neighbors, um, discovered that Green Meadow was actually a frontage road for the 101. Hillcrest didn't go through at the time, Lynn Road didn't go through at the time, and you only had two lanes of traffic, northbound and southbound, for the freeway. At one time, I had a Greyhound bus go up my street. Anybody with a Thomas guide could tell you how to get around that traffic. At that time, we came to the city. I and um, a friend whose husband was Secret Service decided that we just wanted to have Green Meadow closed. I mean, we could do that, okay? Sure, it wouldn't bother anybody. So we did a point of origin study that had 4,500 cars on it by taking every single license plate that came down at or up at morning and night. We were accused of being in collusion with the Sheriff's Department at the time because they did a random study. We had 4,000 cars a day on Green Meadow. That's when although the, the, the problem had been there for a while, that's when we gave notice to the city. Lee Laxdahl was a councilman at the time. He, because of Green Meadow, we got tagged the Green Meadow gang. We went to council, there was no traffic committee. Three times, three times the council voted in favor of what their solution was, which was to put, to close Newbury Road at Hague. And that's what they did. And the first weekend it was up, somebody went through it with a truck. Three weekends later, somebody else went through it, and they finally put up the kind of barricade that has the aluminum rails about that wide all the way across the street. It stayed for three years. Councilwoman Frances Prince gave us um, at least six months after the barricade came down, which was contingent on the completion of the freeway widening, Hillcrest and Lynn. So we had three years of basic peace, with the exception of neighbors who still continued to speed. But we couldn't do anything about that at the time, except there was a motor officer named Jerry Lawrence who used to park behind my Plymouth Duster and just line him up at the curb. So it's been a long problem. I've had neighbors aim their car at me. I've had fathers with their children rail at me as they go up the street. My husband, who was 42 years with LAPD, finally told me I wasn't allowed out of the backyard. So Green Meadow has put up with a life factor that harms our everyday existence, that keeps us on watch from the time we pull out of the driveway or we walk out our front door. All we're asking with speed humps is to enjoy the quality of life that our neighbors have enjoyed
for 40 years. The argument hasn't changed a bit. Excuse me, I need to get a sip. The argument hasn't changed a bit with the neighbors. We don't really have a problem, but if we do, they don't want it on their streets. Green Meadow is designed for speed. It's a downhill slope and it's four feet wider than the adjacent streets. It's 40 feet wide. So even if there are cars parked on both sides, there's plenty of room to speed on Green Meadow. You go over to one of the adjacent streets and there isn't room to speed because when they have cars parked on both sides of the street, it's narrow. I guess what I'm asking is the kind of daily existence that my neighbors have enjoyed for the past 40 years. I've served this community in almost every capacity that I could get into, including when, when it went for the third hearing with um, the council, Lee Laxdahl decided we can't keep running these streets and these problems past the council. They don't have time. We'll set up a traffic committee and we'll weed them out. That's where it came from and I served on the first one because I figured paybacks are a you know what. So um, I think that speed bumps or whatever are, are a good idea. I do. They're not, it's not, um, it's not etched in stone. If things don't work out, I know you could come by and just scrape them right off, but let's give it a try. Thank you very much. Do we have any questions? Okay. Thank you. Okay, and now, um, let's see. For the record, we have um, eight statement cards, um, which are people who didn't want to or couldn't speak. Eight statement cards. All of them were in favor of the speed cushions, and none of them were against the speed cushions. So, um, do we have an? Ep Let's see. At this point, um, do we have any questions for staff? And after that, we'll have staff answer any points that the public has had. So, do you have a question for staff? Yes. Uh, as far as Reagan Motors is concerned, it sounds exactly uh, like what the auto mall was doing on Valley Spring. And uh, can we, do we have to make a motion to, to address Reagan Motor traffic? Or can you just write a letter from the city to Reagan Motors requesting that mm -hmm. they not use those streets? Yeah, we could, uh, I, I think in the past when uh, actions like that were taken, that was part of the motion um, for Valley Spring Drive when uh, we were asked to write letters to the Auto Mall um, Association. Something similar could be done here where that would be part of the uh, recommendation or the motion. Okay, we'll include that in a, another motion. Um, I do apologize. Uh, Mr. Tuttle, you do have a rebuttal if you want it, and I jumped ahead and I apologize. Um, yeah, just a couple quick points, um, and I don't want it to take up my time, so if it's possible to pull up that map of the, the, the various pass-through or spillover neighborhood. Okay. Um, if you're going to leave the I'm gonna podium, I'm gonna oh, okay. I'm going to come back. Okay. <laughs> so, so with respect to, the, to those various areas that are highlighted in green, what we're talking about now in the yellow area um, is a problem. It's a problem we have today. And as, as every, everyone stated, and I'm not going to overstate it any further, it, it's an existing problem. Whether it spills over and who gets the brunt of it, my view is, frankly, that Hague Road will get it. And given the number of homes that face Hague Road, which are next to nil, it shouldn't bother anybody. Um, with respect to individuals that live on Brookside that take the one block of Green Meadow every morning. Whether I have speed humps in front of my house or the other two-thirds of Green Meadow should be indifferent to them. Um, and lastly, I think the, the, the whole traffic relocation thing, I, th I think I take everybody else's point. I get that there's concern about that. Right now, that's a concern. It's a hypothetical. 
Ours is a reality. If the hypothetical becomes a reality on any other road, I live on the corner of Green Meadow and me and everybody on Green Meadow will come over and support you in whatever solution you need to get for your street because we've been experiencing it, but we should not have to continue to experience it just because you're concerned about a hypothetical situation that might occur in your neighborhood. With respect to the issue on speed humps, bumps, cushions, for the avoidance of doubt and those that are concerned about it, what were humps and are now cushions and Mr. Mashiko can correct me if I'm wrong, and I'd appreciate it if when I'm done, if he could elaborate on the specs for these and the effectiveness that keeps being called into question. But my understanding is they're 12 foot long, approximately three foot high, three, excuse me, three inches high, <laughs> with the gap that he made reference to that, that accommodate bicycles on the outside of each lane as well as on the inside in the traffic lane where they can travel. I am a sports car enthusiast and, and I just had mine lowered and a new racing suspension put on mine. Um, I know Mike has a, a lowered Camaro. One of the first concerns we had were that. Others that have motorhomes were concerned about that, and that same motorhome can travel the same path that the fire truck does with ease. So all of these other things are just excuses uh, uh, that, that merit no factual basis. Um, so the only thing, uh, that's really all I wanted to touch on. Um, I would appreciate it if, if there was a comment made that they're not effective and everything, every data I've seen supports that they're effective in, in reducing speeds up to around 15 miles an hour from where the actual speed is now the historically. And I'm sure Mr. Mashiko has better uh, data on A, the effectiveness, and B, what the exact dimensions of these are and how they accommodate bikes. And I would just prefer it if he would elaborate on that before this meeting closes so that everybody can walk out of here with a factual understanding of what this cushion is. Thank you for your time. Thank you, and I'm sorry that yeah. I didn't get you right away. That was my fault. No, no worries. Um, what will happen is we will resume asking questions of staff, and then staff who have, um, Mr. Mashiko uh, typically makes notes of all the points that are brought up and all the questions that are have arisen with the public comments, and then he goes through them after our questions. So you'll get some good answers. Um, do we have any other questions? Of staff. Of staff. Yes. I'm sorry. Um, Mr. Tuttle was a rebuttal, and we cannot have a dialogue at this time. We're, we're done with the dialogue. Just the point of uh, we're done with the dialogue. I'm sorry. And uh, because you're not on the microphone, you're not on record. And I'm sorry. We're done. Um, Thank you. Terry had a good point. Uh, this is a very unique situation where we have a freeway frontage road turning into a residential road. I, I was thinking there's no other place in our valley that's like that, so this is a, a problem. And I bring that up because Hague Road basically is not a, a residential road. And would it be possible to encourage more um, eastbound traffic to, to use Hague Road by not um, making them stop at the intersection between Newbury and Hague? In other words, have a right turn lane, no stop, just and go right on up. Is that something that uh, traffic engineering would consider, and assuming there's enough room to have that type of lane? Yeah, that's uh, what you call a, I think you're describing a free right turn in the eastbound direction where the eastbound traffic on Newbury Road would uh, not have to stop at the stop sign. Um, yeah, something like that. We'd have to look at the um, the width of the road because you need quite a bit of room to, to squeeze all that in. So, um, And what is the speed limit on Hague? On Hague Road, uh, I believe the speed limit is 40 miles an hour east of... Um, or, uh, or it's yeah, it's forty miles an hour in in that vicinity. Do we have any other questions? Con Do we have uh, cut through traffic measurements on uh, Capitan and uh, Linda Wood and Castilla, which would be the alternate cut through route uh, if somebody didn't want to take Hague? which looking at this map, I don't know why they would want to take that route to get over to Newbury Road <laughs> versus uh, Hague Road. I've driven Hague Road. I've driven that own neighborhood, by the way. Um, but do we, have, do we have traffic counts now so that if anything changes later, we have some comparisons? 
Uh, no, we, we didn't. Uh, we don't have uh, accounts on Capitan or Linda Wood or uh, Castilian. We were um, up against the clock in, in getting the, the data uh-huh. in before the school year ended, so we focused uh, our efforts on Green Meadow Avenue. Depending so, on this vote, could we so, request those? Yes, and in addition, if uh, ultimately if um, speed cushions are approved at some point for Green Meadow Avenue, we would do a thorough um, neighborhood traffic count through all the streets that might be considered uh, diversion routes to uh, have a baseline traffic count uh, as current conditions. And then if speed cushions were to go in, we can measure them again and see what the change in traffic volume on those uh, um, diverted streets would be. Could we include Hague in that to see if the traffic increases on Hague from what it is currently? Yes, I think um, everything on this uh, the map that's shown on the wall with those green diverted streets are the streets that we'll be looking at. Thank you. Commissioner? Uh, one last point, too. What's the uh, cycle duration on Hague Road and Lynn Road? Is that a long cycle? So if people decided to take Hague, would they have to wait longer? than, say, on, on uh, Green Meadow and Lynn? Okay, you're referring to the signal at uh, Hague Road and Lynn Road. Right. Uh, currently, we don't have uh, what we call synchronization at that signal, so that signal uh, operates what we call free. So uh, it rests on green for Lynn Road traffic and will only change when there's a traffic or when there's vehicles that approach southbound and Hague Road. So there's not a set cycle uh, length of time. And how long does that take to trigger the green? Well, if there's no vehicles on uh, Lynn Road and a car approaches from Hague Road, uh, it would uh, change within 10 seconds. You would need uh, enough time to provide a yellow to clear the intersection so then you have a safe movement from traffic from Hague into Lynn Road. Thank you. Mm. Of all the community members that approach the city about adding speed humps, what is the data supporting these um, community communities actually requiring all of the um, or hitting all the requirements to be eligible for speed humps? What I'm trying to look for here is how often do people like the folks on Green Meadow come forward and actually hit all the core measures to be eligible for the speed humps? Um, it's it's not. I think we reached a point where uh, that uh, it doesn't happen very often. Where streets now uh, meet the criteria for uh, speed humps, uh, the original speed hump criteria that was originally adopted back in 1983 was much more stringent uh, because we reached a point with that criteria where, uh, as we received petition after petition, uh, speed uh, streets were not uh, meeting the criteria. So in 2009, the city council and Traffic Commission looked at the criteria and modified them, uh, relaxed them so that streets can, you know, that were residents from those streets that were looking for speed relief um, had somewhere to turn because there were all these petitions were being uh, denied. So we re- I think we're reaching a point again where um, as we receive petitions, we're, we're not seeing very many that would be approved. And this is one of the streets that meets the criteria. And do you have any data from 1997 that we have access to just to benchmark the traffic levels from that time when the community came forward and requested speed humps? Um, I'm not sure if I have that data with me, but um, uh, mm-hmm. yes, yeah, so back in 1997, there was a petition request for speed humps on Green Meadow Avenue for the same road segment. And at that time, it didn't meet the um, speed hump criteria. So uh, when there was a question asked about whether or not this is a new petition, uh, th- I answered yes in thinking that that was uh, the question that you're referring to, that old 1997 investigation. Um, uh, I do have one question. I'm looking, I'm thinking back to some of our other um, traffic studies in other areas, and I'm thinking uh, Burning Tree, that one, um, wasn't the cut through more like 25 or 30 percent or, or quite a bit higher for Burning Tree? Or do you remember that offhand? Uh, yes, I know Burning Tree was uh, much higher. I think that that's the one um, 
where there's shortcut traffic using Burning Tree as a uh, bypass. Instead of people using Herbs Road, they would use Burning Tree from Pedersen to Arbalus. And uh, I do recall that that shortcut rate during the peak hours was probably in excess of 30%. Yeah. So I'm just trying to wrap my head around this. If the shortcut traffic is 10%, that means 90% are going to this neighborhood. So only 10% of those cars would be the ones diverted. Am I thinking of this clearly? Um, yeah, that's probably that's probably correct. Okay. How, however, uh, um, yeah, there there is a portion that uh, could be using Green Meadow to access other parts of the neighborhood. So uh, th those internal trips within the neighborhood they could be diverted to to other streets that get them to another point in the or the same point in the neighborhood. Okay, thank you. Are there any other questions of staff? Okay, at this point. Let's see. At this point, I guess, Mr. Mashiko, it's your turn. Um, yeah, I'd like to add uh, some comments on some of the uh, uh, comments that were made earlier by the speakers. Um, there was a uh, co question made whether or not these speed cushions will cause erratic uh, like behavior among cyclists to drive um, towards the middle of the road. And will drivers drive in a manner where, you know, they drive one side on, one side off, or d down the middle of the road? Um, we've actually had experience using these speed cushions on, I believe, eight other streets. When we've had overlays on other residential streets, we retrofitted streets with from speed cushion or speed humps to these speed cushions. And after we um, install these devices, we've had uh, good success with them and we have not observed um, any erratic behavior. Uh, the residents uh, were happy with the driving behavior afterwards and uh, they were effective in, in slowing the traffic down. Um, some people believe that they, or there were comments made that they do not slow traffic down but they do slow down traffic to about 25 miles an hour and that's what our data shows. Okay, there was a question as to why the petition does not take into consideration um, the other streets. Um, I think the general idea behind the petition was um, it allows residents along the street with the with the uh, concern to bring this issue to to the city so that it could be looked at. Um, otherwise, uh, I think it, it, it probably would get to a point where if we did include the other streets in the petition. Uh, we probably wouldn't have any petitions coming to the city and, and being looked at in this manner. Okay, and then the last thing was, um, what are the dimensions of the speed cushions? Um, I believe uh, Mr. Tuttle was correct in that these speed cushions are 12 feet uh, long. They're three inches high, and they have... Um, uh, I believe, depending on the width, width of the road, uh, there are probably about four cutouts for the fire uh, trucks uh, to drive through. And again, we did take measurements of the speed cushions on those other streets where we retrofitted the speed humps to speed cushions, and we are finding speeds down to about 25 miles an hour. Is that? Okay, thank you. Um, go on. Besides the installation of the speed cushions, do you have to put up signage too? Is that something that is usually required? Uh, yes, that's correct. We generally place the warning signs in advance uh, of the street. Uh, for example, we place signs on Lynn Road as well as Newberry Road and then the cross streets uh, as, you, as you approach uh, Green Meadow Avenue to warn motorists that they will be entering a street with uh, speed, speed cushions. Are there any other questions, Commissioner? Yeah, I wanted to get a little understanding about this shortcutting that was brought up because as I, I look at these traffic volumes, something occurs to me that um, the way these segments kind of are laid out, um, it certainly does show, and there always is a possibility that, you know, when we put these things in, it will divert traffic down other streets. 
But it occurs to me that those other streets are shortcutting over to Green Meadow, and they have alternate routes also. So it kind of works both ways. Uh, they might actually decide to go a different route themselves. So um, are these uh, daily traffic? Or, I mean, is this bi-directional that you have this down, or are these kind of taken all in one direction? Because I see, you know, obviously the highest one is 2,900, which is quite a bit from Lynn to Cypress. It doesn't really indicate which direction. Yeah, w when we did our counts, it just, our, our machines uh, register them both directions of travel. So um, generally you're probably going to find that it's about, about a 50-50 right. distribution in, in both directions. Or so, so these... People on Cyprus and, and Capitan are basically, they're the ones coming and going and hitting Green Green Meadow, and that's why the numbers keep dropping the farther you get closer to Newburgh Road, because that goes down quite a bit. Yes, that's correct. I mean, if you do look at the map, you'll see quite a number of homes served as you first come in. Uh, the first street, cross street is Cyprus. Uh, you notice there's a, a drop as cars turn off onto Cypress, and then um, there's a, another drop after you pass Capitan. So um, uh, just by looking at that inspection of that neighborhood, um, yeah, you, you can see how uh, traffic di uh, disperses through the neighborhood after you get off Green Meadow. Okay. And, and there is quite a grade on Green Meadow, right? I mean, is that... A do we have a percentage or, you know, do we have any kind of stats on, you know, how much a grade on that street normally increases the speed of a car going, uh, what is it, northbound, I believe, is the way the grade drops? Yeah, the the grade there is, uh, I probably wouldn't call that significant. It's probably in the neighborhood about 3 to 4%, and it's not the entire distance of the road. Um, I, I think I, I showed in the pictures uh, in the... Uh, presentation um, th there is a grade once you pass Capitan Street headed towards um, Newberry Road right uh, but it's not a, a for the entire distance okay I have driven that street and it does make you need to hit the brakes because I mean you do want to roll faster thanks do we have any other questions of staff okay um, do we need to have some discussion or is there a motion at this time I'd like to make a motion to. Uh, one of the associates. Oh. Okay. I don't mind. Go ahead. Yeah. Please. No. Uh, yeah. I first, I want to thank everybody for giving us all this great feedback, um, and I'm sorry I confused the two roads because I was here for Newberry Road. Just to make a point, though, on Newberry Road, which has no bearing on your road whatsoever, because we're listening to you. You're the residents of it. The majority of the people didn't want speed humps. They want us to find an alternate solution to their speeding problem, <laughs> okay? <laughs> and when I went back, as I have my notes here, it was overwhelming that they really didn't want the humps. We did, they just want to solve the problem, of which I haven't actually stopped looking for a more permanent solution for them, just so you know. You know, when something is a problem and you're always trying to find out of your toolbox what might solve it, uh, and uh, that's still ongoing, and I was really actually, you know, not happy that our little stop sign for line of sight didn't get put in but i have a feeling that one will come back uh with that said uh they're really uh i've driven up and down your street quite a bit and people do it's a tendency to i mean there's a lot of volume up and down it it's a residential street uh so i can see why you're here today so that's all i can say but thank you for all your input it was really valuable did you have something Okay, did you want to make a motion? Sure, I'd like to make a motion to support staff recommendations of installing the seven three-inch high speed cushions along Green Meadow Avenue between Lynn Road and Newberry Road. I'd also like to attach to that motion the component of officially um, corresponding with the local business owners. regarding the traffic patterns and discouraging them from using those neighborhood streets. Thank you. Um, Mrs. Zambrano, do you want to um, call the vote, please? 
When your name is called, please say yes or no. Commissioner Gregory? Yes. Commissioner Simpson? Yes. Vice Chair Reader? Yes. Chair McMahon? Yes. Motion carries four to zero. Um, I do want to thank all of you for coming out. We really appreciate hearing from you. Um, you were very skilled at um, speaking with um, facts and not too much emotion. We appreciate that. And um, those of you um, who did not like this, um, it is um, just a recommendation that we send to city council. So the city staff can let you know when the council will be considering it and you can go to the council and express your concerns there. And those of you who support it, I suggest also go to the city council when they're considering it. And um, I guess that's it. But once again, thank you so much for your input. We really appreciate it. And I hope this works. Okay. <laughs> oh, I should have read this. The, okay. Um, I didn't read this. Any person wishing to appeal a decision of the Traffic and Transportation Advisory Commission shall file a written appeal and pay an appeal fee with the City Clerk's Office within 14 calendar days of this decision. The matter will be referred to the City Council at the earliest reasonable and available date. The appeal fee will be refunded only if the City Council overturns the Traffic and Transportation Advisory Commission's decision. An appeal form is available tonight for Mrs. Zambrano. Are we ready to continue? <laughs> we have no audience. <laughs> All right. Um, engineering reports, item 6B, Green Meadow Drive traffic, traffic calming status report. Mr. Mashiko. Okay. Yeah, I don't have a um, uh, PowerPoint or lengthy uh, presentation on this one. Uh, this is basically just a summary of what ha transpired uh, the last time we met and we discussed the Green Meadow uh, Drive. This is on the other side of Lynn Road. Uh, where the commission looked at the possibility of uh, traffic calming type of striping um, south of Lynn Road. And um, I instead of taking that action, we looked at other alternatives. So um, on this two-page report, there's a list of actions that we completed so far and then other actions that will happen, and then we're going to come back with more detailed information for the traffic commission to consider. So if you have any questions on any of these um, items listed on this uh, report, uh, I'll be glad to answer those questions. Thank you. Are there any questions for Mr. Mashiko? Okay. Um, let's see. Um, the status report of prior traffic commission recommendations. Um, I think we can all read that. Um, commission referrals from April 20th, 2016, there were none. Work program and commission schedule. Um, uh, let's see, do we have any questions for staff on the work program? Okay. Uh, item number 10, traffic commission comments. Commissioner? Uh, Commissioner? Yeah, I just have a quick one, and that is I, I had sent Jim uh, some information from another city that I came across with maybe some more tools that are becoming a little more popular to use as as alternates. Uh, everything isn't always feasible due to its cost, but um, since it's hard to justify putting in um, stop signs, some of them slow traffic up very effectively given the right place for them but in residential areas it's always hard to engineer so i just ask that they're looked at maybe you know for future uses and and maybe you know incorporate those or give us some feedback on on uh you know their potential to be used in the city 
because everybody wants a stop sign and we're just not going to put those in <laughs> okay <laughs> Yeah, I just want to comment on that. Uh, I did receive her email, and um, if you look on that uh, work program uh, under information items, the first item is residential street traffic uh, uh, calming options. Um, that information that you provided uh, will be some of the things that we'll discuss when we cover that. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Are there any other comments? I just have a quick follow-up question regarding Make Lynn Road Safer. I wondered if there was any progress on the citizen-generated survey that I believe was sent out. I just didn't know if there'd been any more communication or movement regarding make Lynn Road safer. We haven't, uh, we haven't received anything from the uh, uh, sort of the lead uh, spokesperson on that. So we'll, we'll touch base with them and, and see where they're at because they were going to provide us with some uh, areas where they'd like us to focus our, our efforts on. So we'll touch base with them. Uh, just uh, information item when council passes something such as a uh, speed cushion that comes out of public works budget is that correct uh, yes that's that's correct and we do have um, some um, uh, uh, a budget amount set aside for traffic calming um, oh. devices such as this item if it were the uh, the green meadow avenue item if it were to prove we do have budget to um, uh, install those speed cushions excellent because i wouldn't want sp speed cushions to be put in and then another street that should be paved is is put off so uh, that's excellent thank you oh. um, w one other thing i forgot to uh, mention on um, commissioner uh, simpson's uh, question about the uh, lynn road uh, concerns uh, we did put in for a grant to uh, install radar feedback signs and police enforcement cutouts along that uh, southern segment of Lynn Road. Uh, we submitted it uh, uh, a couple weeks ago, and we're, we'll be hoping to hear back in a couple months on where that goes. That's great news. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, so that was um, item 9. Uh, item 10, uh, any traffic commission comments or discussion? Oh, good meeting, everybody. I think we accomplished something. <laughs> All right. At this time, um, the Traffic and Transportation Advisory Commission is now adjourned until 6.30 p.m. July 20th, 2016 in the boardroom of the Civic Arts Plaza on the third floor. Good night.